molecular, home planet for the diabolically evil Emperor Gorganus. Gorganus has vowed to use his army of alien monsters to conquer Earth. The focal point of a system of power portals he needs to rule the universe. I am Nimbar, head protector of the power portals. To carry out my mission to stop Gorganus, I have chosen four teenagers from Beverly Hills. I summon them by flashing their tattoos. Then they transform into galactic sentinels. Scorpio! Horus! Centaur! Apollo! The fate of the Earth depends on these tattooed teenage alien fighters from Beverly Hills. Very special episode of uh, Morphin Manicast, and um, I'm here with two compatriots, D and Prime. What's going on, gentlemen? Guten Tag. <laughs> and as you, as the silence can tell you, D is not ready for this. Um, I'm, I'm no, I'm ready. I'm just. <laughs> what do you want me to say, bro? We'll, we'll soften the blow. Let, let's start. Let's start with some news. Um, sad news, and this is actually very much Tokusatsu related. Vern Troyer died. Um. And you might be saying, well, how does Vern Troyer have anything to do with Power Rangers? Yeah, I'm how? Glad you asked. How? Yeah. He was the, um, he actually was a suit actor for Furbis from uh, Mass Rider. Yeah, the more you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was, that was, I think when me and Prime did that, I was like, oh shit, I didn't know Vern Troyer was that. So yeah, was, yeah, he, you know, humble beginnings. Pretty pretty cool, you know. But hey, it sucks that he died. Kind of kind of threw everybody off actually, because I think a lot of people were just like Vern Troyer, like whoa shit. So yeah, there's that. Um, so Prime, you- I hate to be that. Huh? I hate to be that one person, but I saw one joke, and this is not me joking. I'm just repeating somebody's joke. Man, that was such a short life. I hate you. I <laughs> fuck you. yourself. Whoever hey, said that? Who ever drown, said that? drown, drown it. You son of a bitch. You're not funny. It's not funny. You're not funny. Not the, clever. The, the laughter that's Fuck coming you. out of my mouth. The laughter that's coming out of my mouth is not because it was hilarious. It's because it's your <laughs> asshole. <laughs> All right. Damn. I'm laughing because it's God. fucked up. It's like wow, Jesus Christ. Wow. I mean, uh, low hanging doesn't... fruit. Matt, excuse me. Excuse me. Low hanging <laughs> fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> I mean, excuse me. I mean, I totally unintentional. Unintentional. That is. Yeah, I'm mean, just saying. Another man, piece of news was, I want to bring up. I'm just saying that was really short sighted of you. Oh <laughs> God damn! <laughs> the stop! Stop! Don't do this! Don't do this! Stop! I got. I like two more niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I got two more. Anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So uh, I don't know if you heard this over the weekend, but um, Hiroshi Fugioka, Fugioka, Fujioka, excuse me. AKA Camarada number one was involved in a minor accident. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, yeah. It happened on the 18th of April at an intersection in Tokyo. Uh, he was driving a car, uh, involved in a car, truck, and a taxi. And it was reported to the Tokyo Metropolitan uh, Police Department. Uh, the car hit the taxi. Thankfully, there were no passengers at the taxi. And, and Fujioka suffered no injuries. Wow. Um, he awesome. said when he, the police asked him what happened, yeah. He said the police asked what happened, and he said, "I paused and proceeded slowly, but then you know we still collided." So everyone relax. Just a minor accident. Camera rider number one is okay. We're, it's fine. Right, Sega cool. Satchua, he's good. We're good. It's all well. It's all well. Ah, right, cool, cool, cool. Um, speaking of which, a uh, couple things. I'm not going to go into details of it. So, um, Toku Nation, they did an interview with uh, Gregory Mitchell. He worked formerly with Bandai of America. Now we talked about this earlier about how about how Bandai America um, is losing the Power Rangers license to Hasbro, and you know a lot of, we were singing praises and stuff and what that can mean. So, for all intents and purposes, I haven't listed the whole thing. Um, there's a lot of detailed information, so to speak, about what was going down, and um, you know with the toy line and stuff, and why Go Buster got skipped. And things like that. Uh, the whole thing with the Legacy Shogun Zord. Um, just uh, like a lot of stuff that kind of like got missed. 
you know, and, and yeah, hit me with some um some tidbits. Like, can you too long and didn't read me? Uh, well, I mean, just a little bit. I just mentioned this stuff because I didn't like. I said I didn't listen to like I just listened to, like five minutes of it and stuff. But it was basically along the lines of the quality control issues with the like, horrendous. The legacy, yeah, the legacy line and stuff. It was basically, in particular, that whole debacle with the Gold Ranger situation. You know, and just like, basically, it's what you said, basically, is that Bandai was kind of being cheap-ish about that. Mm -hmm. And that's also why some of the first initial lines didn't have, like, the weapons, the personalized weapons with them. You know, so it was was a lot of people higher ups that didn't necessarily worth for thinking on how these things should have been released. Mm. So there, there's that. So if you want to, Toku Nation has the whole article and stuff on the whole thing, so you're definitely worth the listen and stuff. Um, speaking of which, uh, two super, super, super t- Sentai uh, footage. Uh, one, Time Ranger. That's the next one from Shout Factory coming out. Uh, Birdman hand rub dot gif. Yep. So that's happening. Um, and also, uh, we get uh, Super Sentai with the uh, Ranger Moms, uh, Hurricane Blue, Deca Yellow, and uh, Magic Pink. Why am I more excited about that OVA than I was about the 2017 Power Ranger movie? <laughs> Why does that fill me with such excitement that that movie did not? I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know. I, hey, I mean, like I said... For all intents and purposes, Hasbro is Birdman hand rubbing or trying to do another movie, so we'll see what happens with that. So, you know. So you know I mean, I mean, so realistically, if they did come up with a movie, how long do you think they should wait? Should it be like a sequel to the 2017 movie? Should they just quietly do a soft reboot? Should I mean, they just do a different team? If like, I was doing what, it. What would you, what would you if do? If I was what doing do? it. If I was doing it, right? So, because they know, I think Hasbro doesn't fully get it until 2019. They begin in 2019 is when they fully get it. If I was them, I would pull a GI Joe Retaliation, soft reboot, but kind of a sequel. I mean, yeah, that I would, I would probably do like I, I wouldn't get I rid wouldn't of the, I take wouldn't, it completely. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't get throw rid of those the actors. I wouldn't get yeah, rid of I, them. You know what? No, I wouldn't even do that. I'd throw those kids under the bus instead of focusing on their team. Ah, oh, but then see. People will still want the Green with Evil or Green Ranger art. Because, like, what I would probably do, I would probably just do a different team. Then, maybe, like, later on down the line, they can, like, you know, intersect and meet up. But, see, like, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't throw them under the bus, but I would pull a two years later and just be like, hey, the team has been acclimated and we just start off the movie with them fighting, (laughs) fighting random (laughs) shits. That's just me. You know what? That's a. a, I was going to say something similar to that, CJ. I'm not even going to lie. I was thinking, like, well, you know, ten years later, and just like get some random actor to be like the black kid, saying that we need a new team or some bullshit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was like that. But I was saying two years, later, ten years later, it's like yeah. But two years later, it's like yeah, keep keep the same team, but then, but just be in dire streets. But that actually goes with the problem. Just said you're going to have to do Green with Evil because you know nostalgia. You're going to yeah. have to do that. So mm-hmm. I, I yeah, I don't know. Revamp the suits too. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Revamp the suits a little bit too. Well, yeah. Yeah, and if they do that, maybe they can get like a power up. It's like a, if they go with your idea two years later, maybe they can um, redo that Megazord, yeah. um, up the suits. I don't know. I, don't I mean, this is this is why I kind of liked GI. This is why I like GI Joe Retaliation because it was like, hey guys, you know that silly shit in the first movie. Okay, it kind of sort of happened, but we're gonna like kind of bring it back to the comic books and stuff. So you know, Destro, sorry to see you go. Even though he might still be alive, I don't fucking know. But we're gonna focus on Cobra yeah. Commander and actually make him be Cobra fucking Commander. So there's yeah, that. that's like the one thing I didn't like. Like retaliation, but the one thing I didn't like is how it threw the previous cast, or the previous group of characters under the bus. Where like they just offhand them dying. What was it like the Nanotech Wars? What the fuck was it called? Yeah, the Nanotech Wars. <laughs> Something shit like that. Like so you just kill off all the original characters like that. I don't even think they killed them. Because... It was just like no, we're just gonna keep. Freaking Duke and uh, Snake Eyes and, and, and Storm Shadow. That's it. Everybody else is like, eh, maybe they retired. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're on another mission, but I don't know. I don't know. But then, what really makes me angry, because as much as I used to like Channing Tatum, um, the decision that he didn't want to be involved with the franchise anymore, and that they went with the idea to kill Duke, like, F you. Like, if he didn't want to be involved anymore, then, like, you recast the character. Like, it, I'm sorry, but, like, I'm, I'm, I'm subscribed to the school of thought that the character is more than the character. Uh, 
Um, that's not to say like the actor has like zero importance at all. Like they do, some actors still do still put butts in seats, but like it's Chad. Like, come on, yeah. like you can recast Duke, man. Yeah, don't, don't fucking kill Duke. Yeah. That's lazy. I, I hate that shit. That's just lazy. Just get get somebody else. And <laughs> but, you know, hey, we we the the Rock took over, and I gotta be real about this. It, that that was a fun movie. Once the Rock took over, so I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I like man. I like retaliation. I like retaliation, and I liked parts of Rise of Cobra. Um, like I will fight anybody that says like, like that last part when they were having the undersea battle. If that wasn't that was the fucking G.I. Joe action, like a motherfucker. That, was, I was, like, that was the most G.I. Joe thing I've ever seen in my fucking life. You know, it had to, it had to be Chris to tell me that shit. I was like, that's stupid. D, think about G.I. Joe when you grew up. Yeah. Think about all the sit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that yeah. is like, yeah. like, even on the show, even the show, we're like, damn, dude, why didn't we think of that shit? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you know, think about it. That undersea battle was literally like the beginning of the G.I. Joe cartoon movie where it was like, America. Yeah. Yeah. America, <laughs> yeah. You know I'm what? I'm pretty I, sure that was the opening to an episode of G.I. Joe once with an underwater <laughs> fight, like, just like that one. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Uh, oh, real quick on retaliation, though, uh, I dare anybody to say that wasn't a fun movie. Like, you can say it was shit all you want, but don't you sit there and say you weren't entertained. Look, look because that ninja fight, it by itself. That ninjas, yeah, thank you. The ninja fight by itself. Now, Chris, Chris knows. Chris knows when I checked out. The second I saw RZA, I was like, you know what, movie? <laughs> you don't care. I don't care. Just show me some porn. And it showed me porn. That's what I'm talking about. That's what, you, that's what it is. I felt the same way with... um. Pacific Rim, man. Both of them, actually. I was like, you know what? Just show me porn. That's all you gotta do. Just show me porn right now, and I love it. <laughs> That's what and, you gotta do when like, you have movies. And I defy anyone to t- look me in my eye and tell me that those two G.I. Joe movies weren't G.I. Joe as hell. Like, the G.I. Joe movies are more G.I. Joe than the Transformer movies are Transformer Thank you. movies. Thank oh, this. Thank you. Sure, that's very true. I wasn't a fan of Rise of Cobra. I, I still ain't a fan of that, that movie, but it's a G.I. It's G.I. I Joe. Mean, but it's I mean, G.I. Joe. That movie. Oh. Don't get the game twisted because I said I like that that ending battle sequence. Doesn't mean I don't have problems with the movie. I have hella problems with that movie. Because well, first of all, how the fuck part. dare you try to humanize the Baroness? <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because like, the, the Baroness fact. is an yeah. amazing character. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, but here's the thing, right? Everybody put the finger at Marlon Wayans. I'm like, Marlon Wayans didn't do anything wrong. In fact, I actually like this character in this movie. Why did you make the Baroness Marlon? Man, look, look, Marlon, why he didn't need to be in that movie was the least of my problems. He was the he was least so, of my problems. He was so far down the list, issues that I had with that movie. Man. <laughs> Almost to the point where I'm you ever see somebody that can, it, It's sort of like, you ever see somebody complain about the, uh, the like, you want to buy this house, so what's your problem? Well, I don't like the the fixtures. That's I don't like the fixtures on the sink. That's what Marlon Wayans was in a, in a house full of problems. That's what he was. Minor. You know, he's there, I guess. He was breathing. Yeah, can, but and I can convince him to move him off the, off the problem list. Like, you can make an argument for me, and I'd be like, you know what? I take him. That's fine. He's all right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You could do that, man. Oh my gosh, man. But yeah, I don't think Roger Crowe was that great. But there was parts in there was like GI Joe, <laughs> real American hero. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. So um, so uh, I think you 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 told me this, Prime. Um, Comics Rider Amazon's has actually made its way to the United States. Amazon. Yeah, Prime. boy. So I think you told me before I I didn't know it was Jap Jap Japan Prime, I didn't know. Good so boy. yeah, so yeah now Comrade Amazon's is on American, uh, Amazon Prime. If you don't have it already, uh, I will say this, okay, and I already seen it. My boy Sam from JVS, he saw it. He didn't know what to think, but he enjoyed it. <laughs> I will say this. All right, it is separate from any of the other Common Riders. It's wholly by itself. Yeah, well, there's a discussion we've been we've been having. Me and some folk off, because like, um, where do we put it? Because, and I ask that question because like, like I like to display my camera riders and like you know, and I have the Amazons from the the Amazon show, and I go, but well, where do I put them on my display? Like they don't go with the Heisei riders, they can't go with the movie riders, they can't go with the show riders. Like where do I put? We're talking these about the com- camera rider Amazons, right? Yeah, I always the, put the, them in the, the same. Ca- I always put them in the same category as the freaking Common Rider, the next movies kind of thing, basically. Really? Because they mean, always, cause sure. to me, the way that they're filmed, they seem like they're all in the same world. 
Yeah, sure. But then there's a little hiccup where the Amazon shoved one of the superhero Tyson movies, and I'm just like, what the crap, man? Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. Shit. Yeah. Damn. Huh. That's a good point. A very good point. So, I don't, I don't know. But so, so far right now, I'm keeping them on the shelf by themselves, but whatever. Well, but, I, I'm, I could be convinced to move them elsewhere. Hey, but, so, but, but hey, I love the fact that it's on Amazon Prime now. So, hey. Yeah, at I mean, point, folks, watch, and I've been watching the hell. I've been watching the hell out of Grip Man, and I'm about to start watching Ultraman Zero. Like, whoever putting all this Toku on Amazon Prime, Lord's work. Oh, Grip Man! I is just been, saw Grip Man has been amazing. <laughs> it is. It is. It's a trip. Um, we probably got to Grip Man, man. We got. Yeah, we, we got. We got to do it because <laughs> hey, yeah, look. Do. Even though, like, it, is it just me or are the subtitles really like bugging the hell out of you? See, it ain't bugging out of me because mainly because I've watched so much fan sub like anime and stuff. A lot of shit just kind of like I don't care anymore. That that's just where just, I'm at. See, see, when I was a younger man, that shit would roll off my back. But now it's like it's so bo- it's, it's so troublesome because I'm like, he clearly didn't say that. There's clearly misspellings in this. Like I got you clearly didn't finish that fucking sentence. Like I got old Naruto fan subs, and I ain't gonna lie, them shits did fucking annoy the fuck out of me. And then I was like. I guess. Fine. So I'm like the opposite, basically. But see, here's the thing, though. But, but the Naruto fan subs, did you pay for those? The first two DVDs I did before I, somebody was like, hey, 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 stop paying for shit. Download the shit. So I was like, all right. Exactly. 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 Free. This is part of my Amazon subscription because you got to get that separate Toku HD thing yeah. to get Grit Man. Yeah. And like, I'm paying for this. Just, and I'm actually only getting a description just for Grit Man. Mm-hmm. And these subtitles horrendous they are fucking terrible yeah but you know what that is right it's basically like take it or leave it you're lucky you got this and it's like fuck yeah that's how that's how they're playing it i mean bro they're subtitling becca as mechanic so <laughs> fucking annoying <laughs> he's clearly they're clearly saying me- me- mecca they're not saying mechanic like what the you know what yeah yeah uh, hey it is what it is um Lastly, let me ask you this. Um, so, Shattered Grid. Um, just telling folks here that that's going to be the comic book corner slash more for Metacast episode once it's over. Uh, so far, it, it's it's staying the course. You know, it's it's doing what it's doing. Um, first issue, I expected that to fucking happen, but now I'm like, yo, so um, how much power is Dracon really trying to fucking absorb to where he just becomes this transformer? Power Ranger now. I'm pretty sure he's gonna be the fucking anti monitor. <laughs> pretty Cause sure right that's now, what we're uh, right now, full 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 disclosure on spoilers here. Uh let's see, he has the green ranger powers, he has the white ranger powers, and what's the other powers that he has now? He has the samurai ranger powers and he has ninja ninja stuff. So uh, yeah, um, ninja helped him, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has three powers now. And I'm like and then Jason You know Yeah. Yeah, J- Jason is you know, looking at the Gold Ranger powers. I'm like, oh boy, here we go, here we go. So, you know, um, I'm gonna take a deep breath here. Something <laughs> to me, 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 calm down. Um, so I kind of feel like I agree with you. Like, it's so far, I stay in this course. So far, I'm I'm interested in seeing where the story is going to go. However, I do take some umbrage and some issue with the fact that yet another Ranger team gets blown the fuck out by Draken so he can then give he can get their powers and then make some more ranger ranger inspired grunts that look perfect for car range for 2018 Boom Studios like fuck you no no just the this fucking respect like you are not winning me over like so far like this is the second or third was the third second or third team I think third team get blown the fuck out yeah, third team third, yeah. third team to get blown the fuck out so, and I understand you're doing that to build Draken as a threat. I get that. That doesn't mean I have to accept it or be happy about it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, well, we'll, see like say, it, we'll, we'll see how it goes and stuff. I mean, every issue so far has been selling out. So, I was like, all right, cool, dope. You know, hey, that that's... that's and I mean, anything that gets people talking about Power Rangers, I'm not against. I'm oh, all yeah. in on that. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, but it's just like the caliber of conversation. The caliber of the conversations where I have like some mm, conceited face about. Yeah. So, um, so now that we're here, we're f- we're finally here. Um, we're gonna be talking about Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills, a show. Beverly Hills, California. From Cal- yeah. not, not, not Cairo, right? Yeah. Okay. Just make yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Um, 
and, and D said it best. I think you had a joke, D. You want, want to tell him what the joke was about the Beverly Hills sign? Oh, thank God it was there. No, I think it was um, maybe the second episode I saw. They show they showed the sign for Rodeo Drive, right? I was like, "Oh my God, Rodeo!" Oh, I thought we were in the middle of Canada. Oh my God! Thank you, <laughs> thank you, because I totally forgot this was Beverly Hills. And you know, it's not like you say it fifty thousand times. <laughs> so uh, this is a show came out right around the second season of Power Rangers, if if not probably when Power Rangers second season was really kind of deep into their se- season. Uh, and like with anything, everybody wants to capitalize on the Power Ranger fate, on, on the Power Ranger like fad. I mean, it wasn't just this show. I mean, Saban, as we said before, capitalized on it with VR Troopers, Big Bad Beetleborgs, Mass Rider, and even Mr. Nike's Aterno down the line, too. And so USA Network decided to capitalize on it. Actually, it was more so, uh, was it Deke? Yeah. Deke. Yeah, Deke. Deke, yeah, yeah. So Deke, who well, ironically also had uh, Superman Samurai. Yeah. So they were going for two for two. <laughs> yeah. So they had Superhero Samurai. Superhero, Something's going to stick to the walls. Something's going to stick to the wall is what they're trying to say. Yeah. Superhuman Samurai actually stuck to the wall for Deke. It worked out for him because they basically pulled the Saban playbook where it's like, all right, we're going to take the fucking Japanese footage, splice it up with the American footage, and we're good to go. And it worked out for him. And and we're going to have more guys. You know that important little factor? Yeah. Toys. Toys. Yeah, toys. Gotta have some of that. Yeah. And, and and that and let's be real about this, the superhuman samurai toy line sold like hotcakes because everybody wanted that fucking the robot, Samus and all of them. It it worked. It worked. Then they decided, okay, we're gonna do another show. Completely American, which I can admire to a point. I can applaud that, yeah. Yeah, I can applaud that. It was gonna be on the USA network. And it was gonna be on in basically like no bullshit. It came on, I remember before Monday Night Raw. Came on at like seven, seven thirty sometimes. Wait, 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 wait! That came on in prime time. Yep. Bull yep. crap! They had to come yep. on and crap. Came, wow. came, 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's mind blown. How blown is your mind right now, dude? No, you they know, had the confidence. They had the confidence. <laughs> Here's my thing that really kills me about that. If that was prime time, to compare it to other shows that were already on USA, it looked incredibly cheap. Oh my God! Yes, wow. it did. Wow! <laughs> I, I mean, mean, think about it. Compared we to joke, you- we joke about because well, hold on now. Yeah, yeah. Like, so when I was when I was doing the rewatch for this show, my wife, the woman, would come in occasionally and like see me watching it, and she would make a comment about like, so they didn't even have that third nigga to rub together, huh? And I'm like, no, <laughs> they didn't. They did. And the whole thing, like people people joke about, you know, the Power Rangers only having like the high school, the juice bar, and the command center and that. But here's the thing, though: occasionally, Power Rangers would go do this thing called location shoots, shoots where they yeah. were shooting other places that weren't in other sets. They, they were in and California. Also, helped by the fact, yeah, and they also helped by the fact that they had like you know the Japanese footage, so, so the show never felt you know confined. Like it, it, the world felt you know larger than it what it appeared to, you know, because they're. Other places than just the same four or five sets over and over and over. Dude, they and went to, over they, and over again. Dude, they went to Angel Grove Park. They were at the beach at Angel Grove. They were in the city multiple times. Yep. They, they over the course of those Boy, at least went, the first three they, seasons they branched out. They went places. Even if they were just going to somebody's backyard, they did more than just being on the fucking sound sound. I think there was a classroom and, and does, episode. I think it was at least a classroom one time. There was man. a classroom in two different places in that school. They were actually in, in a fact, school. Yeah, they had at least three classrooms. Yeah, you're right. Because there was that that workshop room. There was Miss Miss Appleton's yeah. classroom. There was that classroom that Mr. Chaplin uh, would occasionally oh, bust oh, in in on. Camp, that they had the that. That. That's right. There's that was a different room too. Oh, and real talk to give oh. up. To her, Give it up to the juice. uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And to give it up to the juice bar, they use every square inch of that place. They use every square inch of that place to get footage at, man. So it ain't like they just shot the same. Yeah, it ain't like they shot the same shot. You know that same hard camera shot in every episode. Even Billy's fucking wow. damn garage. That was actually filmed at somebody's actual garage. No bullshit. My uncle lived down the street from where they filmed that at. And they had say, to shut somebody, down streets. I'm like, wait, 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 like, they just went to somebody's house in Van A's. It just... <laughs> like, exactly. Like, I'm not well, even joking. He said they had to shit. shut down streets 
filming because of that. I was like, wow. Yeah, we, don't want, we don't want you little bastards on your bicycles <laughs> fucking up shots. Mobbing fucking Jason David and all them. <laughs> um, but that's the thing, though. That little itty bit of extra effort that, you know, two days shooting in a, fucking, in a park helps your world look established, helps your world look lived in. Such a small thing that people, most people don't even, even think super, about when they watch even TV shows. Superhuman show. Samurai actually, at least in three episodes, oh shit, they're outdoors. All right, cool, dope. Hey, hey, hey. VR Trooper said. Away, at least three times. VR Trooper said, yo, we got all this mountain range. Let's try. <laughs> no bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> even fucking Beetleborgs. Even the Beetleborgs went someplace different. Dude, they places, had a whole man. town. They had a whole ass town. town. They had a whole now, ass town. And I know what people are saying. Well, maybe it was different. Two, no excuses from D on this one. Number one, that's deep. They got money. Number two, they got the that Sailor Moon money, cuz. Son, number two, that's <laughs> number two, it's the USA Network. You mean to tell me that the USA Network could have kicked them no type of change back? And don't give me the excuse, well, and maybe went to the monsters, maybe went to the sets that you on, <laughs> and maybe went to the sound effects, and maybe went to this. <laughs> Yo, you know what the most expensive? Well, so what do you they want to know do what the other dollar fifty? Son, you want to know what the most they did in this thing? You know what the most expensive thing in this whole thing was? And I know it was expensive because back then in Hollywood, it didn't cost that much. That fucking weird puppet was the most expensive thing in this whole flipping it looked like show. Like a Jim Henson puppet, I was like, wow, how much they paid Jim Henson for that shit? <laughs> and I'm like, yo, man, that look. I'm like, okay, I can say that may cost cost a grip. That may have been a good eight hundred dollars, man, because that thing had head movement and everything. So I'm pretty sure that would cost something. So how did everybody else look? They look like shit. Oh, that you mean, <laughs> son? Let's, let's break down the plot here, okay? Son, somebody went to Dick Sporting Goods and got <laughs> these kids their dog on junk. Don't you insult man. dicks? Don't you insult dicks like that? They went to the corner thrift store. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, they nah, went to the nah, corner thrift nah, store and then nah, got the bits real. and pieces they couldn't find there at the uh the bargain bin at Walmart. Don't Dude. you insult dicks, that, sir? Dude. They went over. No, nah, fuck that. They went to Joanne Fabric. Said, "Do you got that material? Y'all make sure." Hell no, hell no, hell no. They went to Tuesday morning, which you fucking don't know. It's <laughs> all that shit up. You know what? I don't even know why I said they went to Joanne Fabrics because G-street, that was. Dog. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. See, you said they went to Joanne Fabrics. That tells me that they had a they, they could have formed a seamstress, and we know that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no bullshit though. Um, if I remember, oh. I remember, I read this right. The actors, the clothes had to wear. If it wasn't there, like I remember somebody writing a note saying, like the clothes of the wardrobe had to be extremely done on the extreme cheap. Yo, and to say that about this show, that's no bullshit. Let's, 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 okay. Oh my god! That's, so the central How plot. Okay. So, How much did he spend? I'm know. sorry. I'm, I'm 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 really sorry to stop you, Chris. But that's a real driving point. How much did money did they have? And I understand that Saban kind of didn't have a lot of money doing Power Rangers. You know what I mean? I get that, and I get other shows in the past not having like the book. It really, and you had to come to some type of constraint and all that mess. But how was it that WMC Masters had a bigger budget than this show? Because <laughs> they teamed up with Universal had toys. Because they had toys. Oh, you they know, teamed up yeah. with Universal Studios and they had toys. D. That's the yeah, hey, you know, of yeah, actually, you know, That was a big part. Universal Studios. That uh, I'm sorry. That's not when the beginning of, Uni- of WMC Masters is filmed at Universal Studios. You already get totally money in the bank right it. there. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. You mean to tell me USA, owned by at the time and still owned by by, by NBC? You mean to tell me no? It was no trickle down. I, I guess all the money went over to Silk Stockings or some shit. I have no idea. <laughs> we got to talk about that at some point, like Silk Stockings and all the shit. Ah, nigga, nah, nah, I'm fine, man. So because I actually saw I actually saw an episode of that not too long ago. I'm like, huh. This is very tame by today's standards. Anyway. <laughs> so, okay, so the general plot of Tattoo Teenagers is like this. Four There's teen- a plot? Yes. Four teenagers. <laughs> There's the problem, though. There's the problem. It was all over the place. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Four teenagers ahead. are selected by a being called Nimbar, who is sit, who they use, he's using them to fight an emperor called Gorganus. And that's the plot. He is trying to take over the Earth. And use these four teenagers to do it. Now here's the but, thing. Here's but the see, thing. That's what the thing is. It's the, the 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 MacGuffin of the show is like Nerf. Earth. I said Nerf. Earth. 
was the central nexus point to these things called power portals. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it transport anyone anywhere in the galaxy. Yeah. So again, this whole thing is like, I want to control the nexus point so my army could appear anywhere and take over all the universe. And Nimbar is the guardian of the power portals, so he selects these four teenagers from Beverly Hills. Do we sit there in Beverly Hills? California, United States, that Beverly Hills, where they'll drive. <laughs> oh, dog, nigga, I thought you was talking about motherfucking Sao Paulo, Brazil. Thank you. Yo, I got lost. Yeah, here's the thing. Here's the I thing. just want to make sure we all knew the way they were. Just making sure. Here's the thing. Nimbar is a dick. We we talk about Zordon like, being a dude. Thank you. We talk like, about, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we talk about Zordon That's being a dude. Say. Here's the thing about Nimbar. Later on in the series, we're going to jump you jumping around on this one. There's a character named Orion. And he outright pulls it out there on Front Street or what Nimbar represents. Nimbar goes to world to world recruiting people and has failed fucking miserably at every fucking several, wow. several times. And he says that he leaves their world and he recruits the teenagers to fight to fight Gorganis. When they fail, he leaves their world in ruins and moves on to the next planet. Now, so we joke a lot about Zordon being a dick. We joke a lot about that shit. But at the end of the day, at least Zordon had some compassion and was at least a fucking father figure to those kids. Nimbar, on the hand, does not give us a terrible fuck. He yells at those fucking kids. He calls them losers. <laughs> he, um, and, oh, and yeah, also, he does. This that kills me. He berates kills his me. own team. This that kills me. So the tattoos, right, is a, uh, serves as a tra- um, communication device, right? Yeah, yeah. Tell me why the communication is only one way. <laughs> why can't they contact Nimbar? Why can't it be he flashes and summons them? So like, and someone has Nimbar, or I see something. Why can't I immediately call and tell you? No, I don't know what to tell you. I'm a superior being. Fuck off, human. So you mean to tell me that Nimbar is nothing more than one of those '90s managers with a boy band, and when the boy band doesn't sell enough records, it goes to the next boy band. <laughs> Oh, you mean, a.k.a. the manager of New Edition that went straight to fucking uh, New Kids on the Block? That one? Actually, I was going to say more like Chris Stokes, but thank you. That's a probably a much better <laughs> so, Actually, no, the, the the guy that ran the boy, it was a white guy that did like NSYNC and back, but I don't know, whatever. Dumb mom. But still, the point is, so you need to tell me, and I wish I heard this damn plot line, that he goes from planet to planet because he's failed. Basically. Yes. Yeah, basically. Wow. Earth is the last. Earth is the last place, and so Orion he comes and tells them like, "You do realize he doesn't give a fuck about y'all, right?" And they're like, "But we can our planet. Look, bro, if it came down between you and him, Nimbar would choose him every single time." I watched my three friends fucking die, y'all, and y'all still fighting for this man. Okay. Oh yeah, actually, I think I did see this episode. I just like checked out, man, because I know is this your king, <laughs> son. Nimbar, yeah, basically, two, 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 two. To really describe Nimbar, you ever see that episode of um, Futurama with the floating brains? Yeah. Think of one yes, of them, yes. but they're more disgusting and they have appendages. That's pretty much what Nimbar is. I mean, and, like, they're more, and they're more... Because Nimbar is a, a gigantic magnum asshole. Oh my yeah. gosh, bro. Isn't he? Now, oh, now we talk oh, about how cheap the show freak. is, right? So, 40 episodes, they literally reuse... 10 monsters. 11, because we got one toward in the Snake Soldier. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot 11. I but saw the- four episodes. I saw four episodes, and I actually got out of one because I thought it went to the same episode. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at, first, at, first, at first, I thought that was cute, because I'm like, oh, they don't got that much money, so they got to keep using the suits. And so they put in a reason in the show of why the monsters keep getting reused. It's because they're mercenaries and um, Gorganis keeps collecting their bits and rebuilding them. I'm like, oh, that's adorable. And I thought at first I thought it was quaint and charming. But when they reused that sorcerer monster like four times in a row, I was like, y'all, bro, wrap this shit up. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. No. It's like, Mm -hmm. hey, didn't we just kill you the other day? Yeah, but, you know, he gave me another shot. All right. Mm. All right, guys. I mean, you know. And, And here's the thing. The actors of the show, right? The actors. They they're not bad. They only could do as much as they could with the material as they were given. Like I when I, they're actually one of the reasons that kept me invested in the show for as long as I was because they're actually pretty. I feel decent actors. Yeah. It's just like they weren't giving shit to work with. And like another thing that really kept me involved in the show because I had to find a way to keep myself involved. The show definitely wasn't doing shit to do it to do it. Um, is that unlike you know the Power Rangers when they're all you know friends. 
one of the uh, huge plot points about this show is that these kids were chosen because they weren't friends. Because they're the whole thing is like he wanted the uh, Nimbar wanted their identity to be secret. So first of all, like, let's let's talk about that for a second. Let's touch on that for a second. So so Nimbar he's 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 immediately creating a work environment of hostility because he's choosing people who would normally not get along at all. Um, he says in the guise of maintaining their secret. But how is us being you know not friends? How is that maintaining our cover or our secret? Like if we don't, don't like each other and we're in the field, if I don't like you, motherfucker, like maybe I'm not going to fight as hard for you as if, you know, we were, fr- I, I don't understand the logic behind that. That bothers yeah. So, um, again, versus the Power Rangers where they're all friends, everyone's loving W, we all get those, you know, end of the episode uh, morals and these kids yeah. are pretty much the outstanding, perfect, you know, the perfect 90s kids that any parable want. Yeah. These four kids, Lori, Swinton, Gordon, and Drew are flawed as fuck and like this is it's it was such refreshing to see that when compares to like, like again my number power rangers were like we saw these kids being greedy uh vain <laughs> yep. uh they were antagonistic towards each other uh-huh. uh, like a lot of the interesting parts of the show is the drama between like the episode where gordon was trying to brown nose to swinton's dad to get a letter of recommendation to princeton and uh swinton got all his feelings about it and he told him that like he, ye- he yelled at him stay away from me and my dad i'm like bro we would not see this 93 Power Rangers. There's no way this would be a fucking discussion. This would be like nowhere near Power Rangers in 93. Like, this is just, yeah, it's just, that's a good part of the show. A I good, mean, great part this, of the show. The thing of it is, you had the four characters you had Lori, Gordon, Drew, and Swinton. Uh, Swinton's dad basically was the one that kind of was like, hey, kid son, you need friends. You know, and. <laughs> He looks so crestfallen, like people. <laughs> what? I can't type on that. <laughs> but but the science. I mean, <laughs> because he warped the. Science. Oh, we say. I say because he warped the science. <laughs> now here's the thing, right? Now we talk about like people that were a part of this. The one person, actually, there are two people that you know that were actually part of it. You remember a uh, big dude from Beetlejuice, Glenn Shaddix? Yeah. He actually voiced uh, Nimbar. He was the voice yep. of Nimbar. He, he, was, he was the dude from Beetlejuice that, uh, Beetlejuice, he had the, like the black suit and he ripped it off and he had like the white suit. That dude. He was Nimbar. Then you had homeboy from Salute Your Shorts he voiced one of the monsters. I think it was a Luckhead or whatever the fuck he was in the solution shows. He voiced one of the monsters in there, too. And then also, too, the show threw in cameos. Fucking Zsa Zsa Gabor was in it. Just randomly. Just randomly. Just because. She's, she's there. I'm like, so how much did you pay Zsa Zsa to get on the show, dog? Like, I, I really need to know. I'm sorry, who? Zsa Zsa, Zsa, Zsa Gabor. Gabor. One episode. What's the... What? Yep. Huh? Playing herself. Jaja, Jaja, Jaja. a mayor. It's a it's in a reality mayor, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She because hey, Beverly Hills. Of course, somebody's gonna be there. Why not? I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad. Or that's the most random thing. <laughs> and here's the sad part, right? So you remember how in Superhuman Samurai, it was a, if I remember correctly, a dream sequence with them defeating uh, Homeboy in that movie in that show. So to speak, not dream, not, not dream scenes, but was it like yeah, the when they um the Christmas special it was like the best episode of the damn whole show. Yeah, where they defeat uh uh fuck what the fuck Killigan. Yeah, Killigan, right? Uh, that two teenage alien fighters kind of sort of did the same thing. <laughs> sort of, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Was, and actually, yeah, like to be honest with you, like again, I'm I'm deriving enjoy, enjoyment where I can find it. Um, compared to the other fights, is one of the better fights of the show. So um. When they were jumping on top of the building, doing a little yeah, sword yeah, 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 clash yeah, or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, it was fine. It was, it was dope. Not, um, not, not great. I mean, great, I, not good. I, I, I mean, I, I, good I, I, by I, their standards. I question why the Sentinel Knight looks just like the bad guy, but okay. That's, you know, that's I mean, sure. I mean, yeah, you know. <laughs> that, that, that's I mean, fine. That's the only thing they had available at, at uh, you know, Party City, but whatever. It's fine. I'm, it's I'm just, see, here's the thing. I'm pretty sure D will laugh at this. Uh, I'm just wondering why, like, you know, their sentinel forms look like American gladiators and not the actual actors. You know, I mean, is that the actual actors or no, is somebody just... Hell good, no. good. 
Oh, you think that? Hell no. Good, because I had this you feeling like... Quentin? I just had this really sick feel, feel of that. Like, oh, shit, man. D, you know that's them. Nah, it ain't D. That's really them. For real? Swint, Swint, <laughs> I, Swint I, don't look that swole, dog. I was like, yo, Swint I, is oh, not yeah, that I know he's that swole. I know he ain't, but I thought it was one of those weird things like, see, man, what you didn't know, D, and you drop all this knowledge on my head, like, yo! <laughs> Good. Good. That, 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 that see, avoided here's that. here's the thing. There's not much... So, to play devil's advocate. Yeah. To play devil's advocate, though, homeboy did wear a lot of baggy clothes, though. Uh, you might be right. You might be right. <laughs> you might, play you might be after, but he wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't, though. He wasn't. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just being an asshole. Don't ignore me. Uh. But then again, the blonde girl. But the blonde girl, she, I like, that might be her, man. You know, she just didn't have a flex because she's wearing 90s, you know, throw up. So, you know, that might be her. No, nah, yeah. I mean, hey, look, I, look, we talk about the women of these kind of shows and stuff and, you know, they're fine as hell. I ain't going to lie. Some of the women, you know, you know, both two look, were looking nice in, the, in that kind of 90s way. I don't know what they look like now and stuff. So, you know, could be different, but. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. sure, Chris. Let's just go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. We, we, we can go which, with that. Which also, which was kind of piggyback on that. That one episode when they were in dream sense. Yeah, and they were they realized they were in a dream. And Gordon said, "I can see anything I want." And he looked over to Lloyd, and her her clothes disappeared. Like that shit caught me off guard. Like, whoa, like, whoa, 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 was this a what? children show? <laughs> like, wait, hold on. Is Mark and, and kids really? Huh? And I was like, and Lori, Lori, girl. You fit. <laughs> you treat him. All right, then. <laughs> I literally was just like, so I guess she is maybe one of the Sentinels when they get big. All right, shit. All right. I'm like, we can go ahead, then, girl. All right. Like, okay, that's uh, cool. Um, but yeah, it's, it's Tim Monsters. They turn to giant form. It's which, by the way, which, by the way, did it bother you that they didn't they didn't comment on it at all? Because like, there's it's one thing. So, like, if if your characters in your fantastical world, if they aren't phased by the fantastical things that are happening to them, why should I, as an audience member, why should I care? Because, like, when they when they first first of all, when Nimbar recruits them, they really don't question it. And again, I hate to, I hate to compare it to, but I I, I got to compare it because they came on at the same time. The first episode of the Power Rangers, the Rangers were like, "We're gonna become a what now?" Hey, fuck you, floating head! And they walked out like they had an actual <laughs> realistic response to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. They did. See? Yeah, these four kids are like, oh, okay, because he's selling these power discs and we'll transform now. Like, they question it. They didn't even question, wait, why are we growing to giant size when we do this? Like, why do we have to grow to giant size when we do this? I mean, me at home who's seen the message being made uh, 100,000 times, I mean, I know why you're growing giant. But it'll be nice if you in the show would make a comment about why you guys I mean, are growing you know, giant. You, you hit on the disc and you just shout out Scorpio, Taurus, Centaur, <laughs> Apollo, and boom, you transform. And that's another thing. Saying, so I'm I can only it. transform in the base Nimbar. So like, what if I'm out in the streets and I see, hey, there's a giant <laughs> monster. I better contact Nimbar. Oh, wah, wah. I gotta find a portal to get back to the base to transform. You know, thank God they always go <laughs> to the same thing. place to fight, though. At least they go to the same place to fight every time. So that's a good well, thing. The city or the countryside. That's your only two options. I mean... Middle of the Mojave Desert fighting, man. There's these two giants in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. Is, <laughs> that, is, that, is, that, is that delaying my right. drive to work today? All right, cool. Hey, 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 I need to go on the four or five. This, this is going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and you see that one episode, that one line, they say, like, those are, like, different locations. Like, oh, um, the Predator Raptor just appeared halfway across the world. But did he, though? But did he? No. Isn't that not that the same not the same desert just fought in twenty minutes ago that you said was right outside LA? But did hey. he though? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Where are they from again? Um, I think Beverly Hills. I could be wrong. Oh, okay, could be wrong. Okay. Could be wrong. Don't worry, too much to try. I got to double I check al- though. Got to double check. I almost fucking forgot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I forgot. Wow. Don't quote me on that though. I'm pretty sure. But I might have to double check. You know, I you know I hope they have a shot where they zoom into the Beverly Hills sign because that's so iconic. And then again, we might forget. So I hope they show that at least four times in every episode. You know, that would be just very nice. I'm just saying, like, how do you have weapons and all you do is shoot bolts out of it? Can I can I get somebody I, getting sliced in half? Yo, can I get something okay. here? Why do they, like, why do they all have blade whip? 
True story. Why? I remember doing some shit like that as a kid for whatever reason. Like you know when you like you're playing with pew, your, pew. your your cousin. <laughs> And you pick like a yeah, you pick up like a broomstick and you go back rat a tat tat and all that stuff. But then we have at least we at least have the knowledge to um you know play swords with the fucking brooms at least once or twice. How when is it possible you have an axe? You have an axe, a double sided <laughs> axe, a double double handed. Yes, yes, son. This motherfucker. I'm like yo, he about to fuck him up. Zap zap zap. What? <laughs> well. They only have at least, at the very least, they only have two versions of those monster suits, and they can't risk them things getting cut or bruised in any way because we got to use it in a week for episode fifteen. So <laughs> don't you dare cut this yo. suit. Yo. Like yo, that one episode where Gorm that staff and he actually like hit a monster with it. Like I had to pause and make sure he didn't rip a seam <laughs> because I was actually surprised they let him do that. I was like, yo, he just bend with the with the staff. Hold yo, on, whole boy Rewind. has a bow staff. <laughs> Homeboy has a bow staff. Taurus has a bow staff, and he's shooting blazes. I'm like, I'm pretty sure your bow staff ain't gonna cut anything. What are we doing here? What are we doing? Because they can't damage the suits, man. Oh my I'm god! I'm pretty sure that's the only reason. <laughs> but it don't get you know they what the best part about it is. These motherfuckers combine to make a knight. Now, first off, I'm already asking the question. Like, okay. I get that, you know, it's a knight and we know what a knight is, but you mean to tell me from a distant galaxy far, far away, there's a knight that looks exactly like a medieval knight on Earth. You know what? Cool. Fuck me. Whatever. Nah, nah, Just go nah. with it. On top of that, on top of that, bro. So apparently in the episode with Orion, he revealed that him and his three friends, they form Nitron too. And from the dialogue, mm-hmm. it sounded like their Nitron looked just like that Nitron. So, and also, Orion, you're from an alien galaxy. Why are you named that for constellation in our so- in our solar system? I mean that that makes too much like sense, Prime. Come on, that now. makes too much sense. It's that's like look, look, that's look, Nimbar. Look. That's Nimbar's fucking game right there too. Blame him. <laughs> and you look, look, and I get it, and I get it. I know that um that that Andromeda is pretty fucking big. You know that you know that's where we from. You know we from the Andromeda. We from the A nigga. I understand that shit. I know <laughs> very wide. <laughs> I don't know. Wait a minute. Hold on. Earth is not is a part of the Andromeda system, man. Are we? I do got that right, right? I believe so. I mean, if, I do, I do if, got I that. If the show of drama, if the yes, show of drama yeah. is any indication, I believe so. Oh, all right, cool. Yeah. If I believe anything from Mass Effect, then yes, we yeah, are on the Andromeda yeah, yeah, spot. Yeah, 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 I just had to make sure. I didn't want to. No, that, this is not me making a joke like the Beverly Hills. Wait a minute. They are from Beverly Hills, right? Yes, they are. Yes. Okay, let me, let, not let me just double check. Let me just, I got to look. Hold I on. Look, it's going to drive me crazy notes. if I don't look. Hold on. I, I had look. notes. I, look. I, look. I, I, I had notes, nigga. I didn't know. But, yo, I get it's all big as shit, but you need to tell me that it's the exact same night. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. Then he takes out a sword. All right. I got to be real with you guys. I don't know why I expected this nigga to actually do like a swiping move like the Megazord. No, he goes pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> I was so ready. I thought it was going to be like, you know, like, sh- no, he blows up. No, this motherfucker shot a laser out of his sword. I'm like, why? Just give him a gun. Just give him a gun. <laughs> it ended it. You guys, like, tripped the hell out whenever they oh. did the Nitron victory pose that they made in Windows Movie Maker. Sorry. They copied it every episode. True, true, true story about that on Prime. My wife was right beside me while I was walk- watching that. She wakes up from her nap. She says, and I quote, <clears throat> D, what the fuck are you watching? <laughs> listen, listen. Let me, let me you think. also love how, you also love when they did your pose. Like they never like corrected the aspect ratio in the background. Right so, when the camera zoom, so when the camera zooms in, like especially in the um, the city background, like the building stayed the same size, but Nitron was getting smaller. Like, wait, what? No. Yo, let me, let me yeah. tell you something. My memory as a kid. Bear in mind, okay, this is 94, 95, the show's out, right? You messed it up. My what memory that's the aspect ratio of this shit. My, here's the sad part, right? When you're a kid, right? You eat up anything, regardless of the quality, because hey, it's 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 something that you enjoy, right? You know, because hey, look, we watched the, you look at the early seasons of Power Rangers, some sketchy stuff, but again, as a kid, you eat it up because oh my god, it's so awesome, right? Right. As a kid to watch this show on the USA Network, 
I knew something was off even then. And I'm a fucking kid that's like watching this. That's the Bruh. sad part about it. I have never in my life heard anybody say that this is their favorite show. Not Thank even you. contrarians. Like, <laughs> not, no one has ever said, yo, Tattooed Alien Fighters, that's my favorite show, dog. I have never heard. Uh, uh, I have uh, met people that have said that they prefer Beetle Boys and Power Rangers. Oh, okay, cool. I have met people that say, you know what, I don't really like Super Sentai. I don't, I don't like Power Rangers. Okay, cool. I don't met people to go, I only watch the Japanese versions. Okay, cool. I have met such a wide range of people. I have met people who have looked me in the eye and have said that, um... Their favorite season of Power Rangers is Operation Overdrive. Cool. I, I have never in my life, in my <laughs> many years on this planet Earth, bro, I've met people who have told me they like Voltron the Third Dimension. I have never once met anybody that says that <laughs> tattoo teenager alien fights maybe Hill. Hey, I told you on Twitter, full disclosure, I'd rather watch Mass Rider again than this shit. I'm sorry. sorry. Cause. sorry. I would rather, cuz, I would rather watch the game then watch this show again. <laughs> I would rather watch. <laughs> I would rather watch twenty Tyler Perry movies on Earth on than watch another episode of this shit ever hey, again. I would. I would rather watch Power Rangers Dino Charge, Sabah's Matter, and the last season of Beetleborgs all on the same screen all at once than watch this ever again. I gotta. I have to. You know, while we're on that, I have to make an apology. I'm taking out my little reading glasses. <clears throat> to all those kids in the seventh grade, I cussed out completely. I'm sorry. Power Rangers Turbo the movie is not that fucking bad. <laughs> I am so sorry. I said this not knowing the horror that was Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills, which ironically was on and it actually was a thing that was made. During that time frame, listen. I hope yeah, that my words. Can, People can, I hope that my words show. can. I really do hope that my words can soften any type of blow and soften any <laughs> type of harm that I brought to your life. Again, I never knew horror until I saw this show. Listen, I'd rather <laughs> watch that fucking Mortal Kombat cartoon than this. Hey, look, man, look. Uh, that uh, cartoon. Was I'd rather bad. watch the entire season <laughs> of Ninja Turtles and Expectation. Woo! On repeat Woo! for a month, Woo! for a whole Woo! month, Woo! then watch an episode of this show ever again. Hey, folks, give me, me give me the ten worst episodes of Mortal Kombat Conquest, and trust me, Conquest when it was bad, it was real bad. Give me them constantly on a twenty four hour loop. Hey, I'll hey, do. Sad part is the Conquest came around the same time as this show too. Oh yes, it did. But here's the funny thing about Conquest. They had some shitty, they had some really bad episodes, but then the good but ones were like, try. well, all right. But then, but then the try. good episodes are really good, man. But yeah, whatever. See, that's, see, so that's comparing. See, really, what I just did, see, what, what I just did was compare a Pinto to a beat up, a beat up Maxima. Sure, it's a beat up Maxima, but it ain't a damn Pinto. You know what I mean? So that, so that's not fair. It's kind of like, it's just try, because it's like, I don't, like I said, you question where the butt, like, here's the thing. If I'm running down plot points of this show, right, there's 40 episodes, right? I'm sorry, there's a plot to this nigga? No, 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 I'm saying, the 40 episodes, right, a good chunk of them was, like, superficial stuff, like, for instance, um, Leslie Dennis' character, for, uh, see, this is, this is how bad it is. Um, what Lori. was it, uh, 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 Lori, right? There was an episode where, because of them doing teleporting and stuff, she could read minds. And that would be the makings of like, oh, that could be an interesting show. But it was just like stupid, like dumb stuff. And it was like, is this going to fracture the group? Oh, boy. And I'm like, nope. nothing, <laughs> nothing. And that's, the, and that's the thing, though, dude, dude, there are nuggets that it, this could have been like a really great show here. Because some of the plot lines, like you said, some of them had some some potential, some interest. Like early on in the season, there was an episode where Gargan used a monster to mess with people's perceptions of time. Where, yeah. for example, like if I ordered a pizza, if I ordered some coffee, you would go get it and bring it back to me. But by the time you bring it back to me, it would it would appear like you just came right back after I asked for it. But the coffee would be cold. Or uh, when Gordon went to go talk to his mom, his mom sat down, but he would get back up saying, "Well, that was a good hour, Gordon. Glad we could meet." And so, like then later on, Swinton was noticing, like, "Yeah, hey, something's not, something's going on, something's wrong here." Like he goes to the restroom, yeah. and on the way to the restroom, he passed the future version of himself. So that means whatever the Gorgonis was doing was really 
fucking with the space time con- uh, continuum. So I'm like, oh man, this is interesting. How are they going to resolve this? Where are they going to go with it? Oh, he goes going to teleport to the desert and do some ball flips around and just shoot a laser at a monster. It- that's oh, it. okay. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh. You know. Hey, right. you know, there's nothing worse. You know, I, I, I that really says something because there's nothing worse than a television show, movie, whatever it is, where there's actual potential, like legit potential. Because if that was done on a Power Ranger show, it would have been, it would have worked. It would have worked. Because I hate they would have addressed, addressed I mean, at least I mean, I mean, some of the plot issues. I, mean, I, mean, I think it was uh, Drew at one point in the episode admitted that he went to counseling. Yeah, uh, yeah. She went to um, or that, or she was, or I think this is the most interesting two episodes in the whole show was when um, Drew's aunt that she lived with, which by the way we never found out when parents. I'm just gonna assume they died or they ran off or the druggies. I don't know. I don't care. The show didn't care. Right. Hey, the show didn't care. So why do I care? The show didn't give a fuck. So why am I giving a fuck? So she was <laughs> her aunt, and her aunt was t- constantly tired of her disappearing and like lying about where she'd been. So she hired a psychologist. A psychiatrist to follow her around and then interview her and after he t- talked to her and was like, you know what? Mm, we're getting your we're getting your your knees committed. It's fucking crazy. Like that's an inter- <laughs> that's an interesting shit going on. Like that that's you can get something you can get some story nuggets out of that. Um, um where they went with it, where the psychiatrist falls into a power portal and discovers uh Nimbar, that's not why I would have gone with it, but okay. I mean, can't move outside those four sets. Yeah, I mean, look, sure. look, yeah. look. Gorgon sent a torpedo to Earth, and apparently it was aimed at the coffee house. That's when I knew the limitations of their budget. When it's like, so he just attacks the coffee house, but we don't attack anywhere else. Okay. If I get well, that I coffee think, house, I will take to over fair, the world. Them. To be fair to them, the plot, the plan was he was going to send a torpedo to Nimbar's headquarters, but the teenagers didn't stay long enough. For the tracker to home in on the headquarters, and they went <laughs> right back to the coffee house. <laughs> so he had because he said, "Yo, I'm gonna blow up Nimbar's headquarters, and um, that's gonna blow up on all the power portals, and I win." They stay around because again, Nimbar was like, "All right, kids, good job. Get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> Leave." Oh my god, man! That's the way he treated him. <laughs> it's like, get out, of, get out of here, please, please. All right, you little rap scallions, get out of here. <laughs> Actually, the four of you. All right, you did your job. Bye. Yo, but here's the kicker, right? So the first episode, through a mistake of spilling coke on a device, they open up a portal. Every time after that, the portal randomly portals portal opens randomly at certain spots, and they just go into like a freaking damn a closet. Or whatever, or the same place inside um, Homeboy's backyard. So I'm like, so is there like a designated place that y'all know, or are those are only two spots? So let me get this straight though. What he had in his possession ripped the ripped a hole into time and space, or was that more of Nimbar's doing? I don't know. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. Was it was it Nimbar? It was random. Because he according to Nimbar, cause yeah, cause, he said it's then, random. Because then he said, like, I, w- I needed to choose more Sin of Nights, and so randomly these four kids pop up, so I guess I just choose these four. Okay. Yeah. Right, Nimbar creeper, man. <laughs> <laughs> but then he turns around, but then he turns around and makes a speech, like, but yeah, I selected you, but wait a minute, how could you select us if we randomly popped up in your base <laughs> to an accident of Swinton again? Why am I thinking so much about this when clearly the show didn't? Yeah. I mean... I, I'm just saying, the fact that Drew's psychiatrist found out about the Galactic Sentinels, and I'm like, so is there going to be anything upcoming of this? And nothing, and we just go to the uh, Christmas special. Huh. All right. And that's, and yo, sure. the Christmas special is legit, folks. That's the last episode of the series before it was like, yeah, we ain't doing it anymore. Yeah, we out. We, we lost their second nickel, so can't rub, rub them together, so. The fact that this shit was on for a year, dude. A year. A year. Like, that's crazy to me. That that is that is wild. Like I I I got nothing. I got nothing. I mean what can what can you say? I mean they they at least committed and I feel like and I feel like even if the show you know, wasn't popular. Like, if they had, like, some source of revenue for it, I'm pretty sure they probably would have kept, kept it going. 
But it feels like they just got together and said, hey, that Power Ranger thing is popular right now. Let's make our own. That's oh, no, no, that's exactly what happened. That's what happened. Without, even, happened. This happen without like even thinking about... We're not even thinking about well, why is this Power Ranger thing working and what's keeping this Power Ranger thing on the air. What's keeping this Power Ranger thing relevant? They just want to like, well, let's just a quick cash book. Let's see if we can confuse the brand. Here's no. the kicker, though. <laughs> they do that. Uh, Hollywood does that plenty of times. Not even Hollywood. Toy makers do the same thing all the time, man. They, they have this idea of let's just hop on what's good. Because, like, uh, Chris can attest to this. The fact that we had three ninjas was the fact that we had Home Alone and Ninja Turtles. Yeah. So that yeah. so, so you have these type of clones come out. Ninja Turtles caused a whole bunch of clones to come out. Oh yeah. So yeah. so so even not even so much clones, but you know I don't think Street Sharks and Stream uh God dinosaurs. Yeah. dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah Stream dinosaurs. dinosaurs. I don't think all of them, even biker mice from Mars. I don't think none of them would exist unless the Ninja Turtles song came out. So we have all these type you're, of clones. You're right. You are right. But yeah, this is thing. Those but three shows, those three shows also had what merchandising. Oh yeah, they did. Oh, oh they did. let me oh, tell you this, folks. Shriek Shark, because Shriek Sharks, they went all for their merchandise. The oh, folks. they were they were all, all in on that shit. Bro. I want you to understand, folks. Okay, when you have shows that are Power Ranger derivatives, even Mass Rider had toys. Yes, there were molds of fucking Kamen Rider Black. Doesn't fucking matter. It had toys. That's all that matters, right? It had something. It had merchandise. Yeah. Here's the thing. Even a, even a, even a T-shirt or a coloring book, like something. something. Though. Like, Here's what? the thing: tattoo teenage alien fighters. I shit you not, folks. The only merchandising they had was a lunchbox and thermos set. That's it. So not so. All right. Book. Here's my good question. Here's the best question. What was the end game? Because that's forty episodes, <laughs> and that's all you gave me. And I'm not even is see, is see, let's like much like much like when you want to just cut let's cut the bullshit, nigga. Was there money that you guys had to pay off not to get a tax cut tax uh, to, to get hit up in taxes or something? Was this was something that you did you really thought you can get money off of like the television time because it did come on in prime time? So what you thought you could get some money off the advertising or something? What was the end game to this? I don't know. I'm gonna assume money laundering. Has they were covering the money for something else. Just, I, it, it, has that's, to be. That's, it has to be. Because that's, 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 the makes, only, that's, that's the only reason. That's the only reason why you will make something this bad on purpose, man. Yeah, I mean, not yeah, even I, this I bad. Heard, now, I heard Boob had some prototypes, but they were never shown in public of toys. Pretty sure them shit but, were like not up to. Dude, let's be real about this. But if they had toys. Well, that's what I was saying. It's Galoob. I'm like, come on. Can I be real? Like, can I be real? I mean, if they had toys, it'd be like the fucking. The backdoor fucking derivatives of popular show toys that you see at flea markets. Yo. I, <laughs> like, I not Power imagine. Rangers, Power Men. I could imagine. You, they look strong like Power troopers? Yeah, yeah, strong, strong Troopers. <laughs> no, what I saw, what the one I saw that uh, whole boy did, the Justice Force, where it's like two Power Rangers and like a Goku and a, <laughs> and like a Superman toy. It's like, what are we doing hey, here, folks? Hey, you know, I'd watch that show. Hey. I, I would too. Oh, for, I'd watch the fuck out of that. Oh yeah, I would too. I would too, man. Come on, Goku team it up. Look like what? You like shitty Goku team and up. Lightning McQueen. And, and Lightning like, McQueen. And Lightning McQueen. What? You got two <laughs> by air. Yo. You got so, two by air. Three fighters and a somebody that can son. Nobody's messing with so, them, so, man. So here's the thing. That's somebody, that, bro. Somebody, somebody put an article up right about. Tattoo teenage alien fighters, and they literally put, and I'm quoting here, where they was like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is what happened in the ballroom." Okay, guys, Power Rangers is making millions. Let's make our own cheap knockoff and score some extra cash for hookers and blow ideas. Well, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are still vaguely popular, right? Hell yes, they're aliens, right? Well, Michael Bay certainly thinks so. In about 20 years, good enough. So the teenage aliens. What do teenagers do now? What's hip? Uh, tattoos. Everybody loves tattoos. Sir, I'm fairly certain parents hate their kids with tattoos. Tattoo teenage alien fighters, though. That's hip. Radical, even. That's what kids are saying these days, right? Okay, sure, sir. I, I guess we can make that work. It needs something else. Oh, dear God, no. These kids gotta be for somewhere, right? What's hip? Well, that Beverly Hills 90210 show is making tons of bank. Okay, they're in Beverly Hills. Okay, so do we have a Bible for this? No. Put it in the name. So let me get this right. You want this show to be named Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills. We'll make billions. 
Didn't you say the show about that Dynaman W is back? Yeah, give me more blow. Sir, I was almost mugged last time. We'll pay your <laughs> hospital bill with all the money we'll be making. Oh, you know God. what? You know, that's bullshit, but I believe it. You know what? <laughs> I will say this. This is actually exactly what happened. Boom, Johnson. Ah, I got a question. Um, looks like Saban is actually kicking our ass. What the, what the fuck did he do now? That Power Ranger show that these kids are yamming around about. Well, I got an idea, sir. Let's put out more Chinese cartoons. All right, stop being disrespectful. They're from Japan, okay? <laughs> stop being disrespectful, all right? Now, now, I have the rights to this show. It's called Drogon Ball. Should we bring that out? Hey, give that to somebody else. But I have an idea. Let's make a sh- let's make a show that's exactly like the po- like Power Rangers, except we make it cool and hip. And let's make sure it's a long winded name because all kids like that. What do you mean long winded? Come on, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's pretty fucking long. Biker Mice from Mars. That's pretty long. Let's make ours long. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Let's make ours long and obnoxious, just like the rest of those people. I don't know about that, Johnson. You're thinking outside the box. That's why you hired me. All right, let's do it. (laughs) That's exactly what happened. Here's the kicker, right? So Jim Fisher, he's the one that is the creator. Hey, Jim, go to hell, man. (laughs) He's the creator of this, and he also helped out on Bobby's World. I'm going to list off some shows. All right, cool. cool, I'm going to list off some shows that that he took part of afterwards that were actually better, which makes me question... Maybe he had the right idea, but just he needed somebody there to be like, hey, we need more money. So here's the thing. He helped Howie Mandel develop Bobby's World. Successful series, right? He actually helped write Young Hercules. It's actually a pretty uh, decent show. Meh. Okay. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, yeah. You know. Hey. I think it's kind of a little under... I think people slept on it. I mean, it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, it ain't Kevin Sorbo. Not that great either. It ain't Kevin Sorbo Hercules, but it's just basically Hercules in high school. That's all young Hercules was. I mean, plus we got Ryan Gosling, so, I mean, take it for what it is. There you go, but yeah. Yeah, uh, he helped out on Sabrina Sabrina, the Animated Series. I think Ain't gonna fake. Ain't gonna fake. I watched damn near every episode of that. Go ahead. Uh, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Oh, that's my shit. I watched that show. I wasn't in love with it, but I watched it. Um... VeggieTales, which apparently I guess he made money for Focus on the Family on that shit. Cause he son, did. son, that's a monster, man. Yeah. And um, Dragon Tales. Really? Yep. Hey, look, man. Everybody needs a dud. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. needs a dud. It's just okay. crazy just to go from, like, you were on all these... Because he actually helped out even before Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters. He helped... He wrote the screenplay for that fucking movie version of the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, and yeah. he actually wrote some stuff, episodes for Mork and Mindy back in the day. So, and Charles and Charles, Charles and Charge. So, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I would love to really get some details on, like, where did you see this show going, dude? You know what it really <laughs> sounds like, though? When you really put it like that way, it sounds like he was working for a studio. And the studio made him write and try to control this show. Yeah. And there may have been actual love put into it, but you can tell this was a cash this was a cash in all show. It was yeah. a total cash in show. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this so you really can hold only so much against him on that one, man. Yeah. Because his resume seems pretty decent. So you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean for him to bounce back off that show and immediately jump into Bobby's world, it's like, oh shit. All right, well, cool. You know, that that's a that's a good come up right there. You know, so yeah, you know, clearly he was in. And I mean, also too, maybe it's because it was on the USA Network, so it's like I don't think anybody gave a shit to a point. Because let's be real about oh, it. Yeah. That's also that era where Fox Kids and Network TV was ruling over everything else. So it's like, eh, it's USA Network. Nobody cares unless it's wrestling. You know? it, 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 even then, even the USA was going through this weird transition point at that time where. Where it was more than just Monday Night Raw, it was actually USA was really trying to be a real legit. Well, not to say they're not no more, but you know that's when USA started to realize that they had type have somewhat power in the cable stations. You know what I mean? They knew they were one of the bigger ones, man. Yeah. And that was because of primetime wrestling. That was because they actually had shows. Shows. I remember they were actually one of the few ones outside of TBS that had shows, man. And 
to show you there was exclusivity of USA. I remember who was it on? Bruce Pritchard was talking about Vince McMahon and how it would rub Vince McMahon the wrong way when they'd be on the road and they'd go to a hotel. And remember, Kibble back then only came in packages. Yeah. USA USA used to not be on every cable station mm-hmm. back then. That was like it, deluxe. I, like you want the extra it stuff, even, you got to pay. It wasn't even so much deluxe. It was just like what who carried it or whatever like that, yeah. right? Like USA didn't become nationwide until about ooh, about ninety seven. Yeah. About ninety seven ish, right? So every time they'd be in like a certain city, you like. TBS would be there, like like always, showing WCW. I just hear, God damn it, there's no USA in here. <laughs> <laughs> so USA, at the, so you got to think about it. USA at this point, when Tattoo Teenage Angel Fans came out, it was starting to grow and starting to really become bigger and starting to become a, a premier cable station. So I think this is just them throwing shit. This is purely them throwing shit at the wall, man. Yeah. Them just trying to make an easy buck, man. Yeah, and, I mean... And, and that's the funny thing, too, is that when we're talking about the USA Network, no bullshit, they actually lumped in Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters to part of their USA Cartoon Express. That they had really, to! Yeah. They had yeah, to! They had to do yeah. something with it. Yeah. I mean, and, that, and that's saying a lot, considering it was like... So let me get this straight. They put this on before wrestling, and they put it on during the Cartoon, during the cartoon Express. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, it's like, and I remember this specifically was like... You know, you had, and I remember when it came on the Cartoon Express, it was on Saturday. So it was basically like after the Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm, boom, Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters. Wait a minute, Defenders of the Realm? Okay, man, on all was yeah, on USA. Remember, because remember, oh, remember, 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 it was Street Fighter, Savage Dragon, then Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm, and then it was like Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters. And then when that left, they kind of substituted with like Exo Squad and Double Dragon. Yeah, but I remember Exo Squad, but I don't remember. Oh, uh, I didn't remember uh, Mortal Kombat being on USA. Yeah, yeah, That's it was on there. It was on there. It was. Yep, because you remember that was like when when Annihilation when Annihilation dropped, they were really going hot and they were going heavy with the fucking MK Defenders of the Realm stuff too, big time. Man. And, and then eventually, that's when we got Street Sharks and the, the Extreme Dinosaurs crossover show, and yeah, Jawsome. God, you said Jawsome. Oh man, but yeah. <laughs> I know I ain't shit for that. I'm just saying. Hey, 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 look. I kind of forgot, too. We had a Highlander animated series. That was that was a thing. I don't think... I think yeah, that was it was like set in the far future. Yeah. And like laser yeah. swords. Yeah. And it was more of a French production than it was an American production. Hey, so USA that was, was taking a mm. lot of fucking damn French shows. Yeah, that was on USA. Yeah, I remember that, though. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. It's, it's funny. It's funny. I... I, I I blame Ninja Turtles for fucking up my perception of other cartoons being on. Yeah. So, so I like Ninja Turtles. Actually, Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers fucked up my perception of everybody else's time slot. So, I will certain say this, people though. say certain things. I got to. Rem- I'm trying my best to remember at the time. I will say this though: the comments that we got from folks when we told them that we were doing this episode has been from Godspeed, y'all, and laughter, and oh dear God, please no. So that should tell you where we're sitting at on how people feel about this show. And so, yeah, it, <laughs> and you can tell that everybody has a horror story or or <laughs> why the fuck are you doing that? <laughs> like that. Or the fact that, number one, people forget that this exists. And it's like, yeah, this existed, folks. <laughs> Let's, y'all, think, y'all think VR Troopers and Beetleborgs was like the derivative? Oh, there was this. <laughs> Understand that there was this. So, you know, there 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 is that stuff. So, um Yeah. Um you, you know, I bet there is an Austin reality out there where this show they were able to get the money to license a Japanese show to help supplement the footage. <laughs> and so my question would be Wow. What show would it have been? <laughs> I don't they know. did they, they wanted four people. And I'm 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 trying to run I'm trying to think what what Toku show would have been. They would have, tried, have they, been. They would have tried to get a fucking uh, 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 Ultraman show to supplant this because that's the only thing that they could have did to really supplant this. If they really wanted to, it'd be like Ultraman crossovers with tattoo teenage alien fighters. Did Korea? Did South Korea have any um, any show? Any Sentai shows like this? I would imagine yes. they did. Um, I would imagine they did. I'm just saying. <laughs> Didn't they have some Metal Hero derivative shows, Prime? Ryu Kendo. 
Yeah. Off the top of my head. I know and, right now. And there's another got, one. I forget its name. Yeah, I know right now they got the Korean version of um, Dino Charge over there. Yeah, Kyoja. Yeah, called uh, Kyoja Bray. Yeah, that's Kyo a web series. It's like 15 episodes. I mean, not 15. 15 minutes an episode. That's not, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I kind of call it that way, even though it was like a pop band that was basically the Kyo Rangers and stuff. So it's like, yeah, yeah. I didn't know it was I mean, minutes, I, ain't I didn't even know that on that level. I was thinking it was a full fledged series. Oh no, no. Huh. Speaking of uh, have you seen that show that they advertise sometimes on Netflix that's made in Korea, um the Mini Force? And yes. that's CGI. Yeah, that CGI cartoon that's about the four animals who transform into power armor and fight monsters and mechs and they have a giant robot. No. It's like it's it's I watched an episode of it. It's it's like something that came out of one of my fever dreams. It's, Is this? It's, if it, I'm looking at images now. It looks like some SD Gundam kind of levels of like. It is. It is a glorious mess. It is. <laughs> it is <laughs> I'm looking it is, at images. I'm like, this shit looks cheap as hell. Like, okay. It, it it does. It does. And it's 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 clearly Disney XD so random because like they start off as cutesy animals and they're being taken care of by this chick and then they. Go you know into what? like this special component on their desk, and they transform, and they still say they they don't grow. They still say tiny animal size. You know what? Um, I'm pretty sure some two and three year old is going to eat that up, and that's going to be their intro to Power Rangers before they dive into the Nickelodeon side of things. So you know. And I say that, that and, I, and I bring this show up just to point out that like it's made with more care <laughs> and thought into it. Than ta- teenage alien fighters from Beverly Hills <laughs> ever was, or probably ever would have had. Yeah, uh, yeah. This, that's I will say this: that two teenage alien fighters. That's one franchise. I don't see Hollywood trying to jump on <laughs> and stuff like. Hey, let's do a remake of that. And it's like, really? Like, couldn't do, couldn't do VR troopers? Nah, big homie. <laughs> couldn't do VR troopers, huh? No. Hey, I got a question nah. though. If we're gonna do this next show, um, you want to just round all this off and just end it off on the American Toku stuff with uh, Misty Nights of Terranog? Wow, really? Um, Might as no, well. Oh, is a palate cleanser? Is a palate, cl- is a palate cleanser? I say yes. Yes, yes. We, we need a palate cleanser and stuff. And I know in between that time, folks, we definitely will be doing more commentaries and stuff. I hope you enjoyed the pressing engagement and Happy Birthday Zach ones because those were fun as hell to do. And I still love D with the Hotep jokes on that one because those were hilarious. Very much. So, um... Yeah, uh, that's it, folks. That is Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters. We spared you the usual two hours that we will probably go in on any other kind of property. So that should tell you where we sit on it on this series. You can't you can't go two hours into something that repeated <laughs> had, had repeated footage more than they should have. You know, so you know. Er- ergo, we in, we will, we will end up turning into Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters, repeating the same footage over and over again if we did. But well, damn, I want to be a positive. I swear, if I see. <laughs> If I see that sorcerer and that damn Dr. Doom mask one more fucking time. Sir, Dr. Um, Doom mask, you, that is an insult to Dr. Doom, all right? That's an insult. You right. You right. My bad. That's uh, Professor Chaos. My bad. Yeah, you Professor right. Chaos. There you go. There you go. Right. <laughs> if you dare want to see, sit there and actually watch the show, I mean, you could be like me and be in Prime and only pay twelve dollars which is being very I nice mean, how much we pay we dumb as hell yeah I mean, we dumb as hell i mean i I'm i went on i went on daily motion now they're split up so bad on daily motion but they're on daily motion trust me <laughs> you won't care because you'd be like what episode is this it doesn't matter <laughs> doesn't even matter uh, I you, saw can start part of, you can start part of one episode and watch the end of the second half of another episode it wouldn't nothing changed nothing changed nothing would have changed yeah yeah so mm-hmm. That in mind, folks. Uh, yeah, we will catch you guys later. Peace out. Happy to Zen.